Hi, I'm Robert, and this is Manhattan Wood Project. Today I want to do a quick x carve video on how to adjust your potentiometers so that you don't lose steps in your x carve due to either thermal overload or low current. So let's do this. What should I make today? Manhattan Wood Project. That looks great! Okay, to start, you want to make sure that your stepper motors are going to be working pretty much full time while you adjust your pots. So, I took and I drew a square that is 24 inches wide and one thousandth of an inch tall. So basically a line going back and forth. I set it to cut half an inch deep and I set the cut depth at one thousandth of an inch. So it's going to go 500 passes back and forth before it stops. I also set the feed rate at 200 inches per minute. With the 24 volt spindle, I will never cut anything this fast. So this should be a very good test for me. I'm going to go over here, carve, confirm material thickness. Material is secure because there is no material. Bit size doesn't matter because there is no bit in there right now. I've already set it in what I want to call the home position. Now turn on the spindle. I actually have the spindle on on the 24 volt power supply so we're going to pretend it's on. So spindle is on. And now it's going to sit here and start thinking. And it's going to go back and forth 500 times. Well, actually back and forth 250 times. 500 cuts total. Right, so I've already removed the bolts that hold the fan in place here. We're actually going to be looking for a reference voltage here, V-Ref, not looking for current. So if I can get the cords out of the way, there we go. So on your potentiometer there's a little contact right here. You want to touch that, be careful you don't touch any of the resistors or anything around it. And then put your other probe on the ground. You can see that right now I'm pulling 1.75 volts, give or take. So I'm going to take and tweak the potentiometer until I notice that I start getting thermal overload. And here's how you tell that there's thermal overload. Oh, and there's thermal overload. So, too much current being sent to it. So right now, steps are being lost. So, I'm going to dial it back just a little bit and let it keep running. And, well, it's still losing steps because of thermal overload. So, I'll dial it back a little more. And basically you keep playing that game, tweaking that just a little bit at a time until you stop getting thermal overload. I'm going to let it run for three, four minutes. And if I don't get thermal overload, I'm going to put a little mark on it right here. You can see that I've already played around a few times. Okay, so it's been going back and forth three, four minutes without me having to adjust it. Now let me block out some of these LEDs here. And you can kind of see that this is facing toward the mark that I made earlier. That's good. So now I'm going to take and find the low end of the pot. So I'm just going to dial it down until I start losing steps because it's not getting current. You can hear right there that it's trying. And then I'll tweak it up.
and you want to just make very slight adjustments. Now, let it sit for a couple minutes, and if it looks good, no changes, then I'll set this kind of in the middle. Okay, it's been another two, three minutes, so let's go ahead and just check the reference voltage here. Now, for the NEMA 23 steppers, you probably don't really want to exceed uh, 1.6 volts unless you need to. If experience shows that you lose steps, then go for it. But the more current you send, the more the motors are going to get worked. So, low end, I'm getting 1.14 volts, basically. And let's see what I'm getting when I turn it up all the way. A little over two volts. So 2.06 volts. So I have anywhere from 1.1 to 2.0 volts to work with. So I'm going to take this just a little bit off of uh, the high set point. Now your reference voltages may change. They may be different from mine. This is a test that you need to do on your own, figure out. And honestly, you really don't even need the multimeter. As long as you mark the high point and the low point, and then set your pot in the middle, and then tweak it up and down if you need to, you should be good. Now to adjust the wide pot, which the wide pot's going to take more current because it's actually driving two steppers, You'd do the same thing on this, except you'd have the uh, gantry going back and forth instead of having the carriage go like this. For the Z, not really too much you can do. You kind of have to sit there by hand, tell it to go down maybe three quarters of an inch, adjust it until it locks up and doesn't move, goes into thermal overload, tell it to go up three quarters of an inch, down three quarters of an inch, up three quarters, just go back and forth until you can figure out the settings for your Z. Alright, so I've now set this to do the Y axis. So I have my line one thousandths of an inch thick, 24 inches long. I have it set five hundred thousandths of an inch deep. And I actually want to set, uh, yeah, I have it set it so lower left corner is 16 inches in the middle and one inch from the end of the y-axis. So let's go ahead and change that to uh, three, uh, three inches. So bit still eighth of an inch doesn't matter. Cut depth is thousandths of an inch and 200 inches per minute. Carve my tool path And there we go, it looks like it's going to work. Will work you good. Confirm thickness, material secure, bit size, use last home, turn the spindle on. That's the spindle. Generating path, let's see her go. Now she's moving back and forth. We do the same kind of thing over here. And I'll show you what happens when you get a thermal overload. So let's crank this up. Let's turn it up all the way. You can tell the sound went a little bit haywire on it. Oh, oh, starting to hit thermal overload. Too much current going to the steppers, it's shutting it down. So it's important not to back off right away because if you do, if you do back off right away and it stopped right here, it's going to want to come 24 inches this way. That will crunch your limit switch. That will do some damage. So kind of dial back slowly, kind of tweak it a little bit. And then you just sit here for a few minutes and go. So if you listen to this, this is what it sounds like with the steppers dialed up all the way on the pot.
And when it comes back this way, I'm going to dial it down to the low end. You can see there's a little bit of change in tone on the stepper motors. Now I'm going to dial it down a little bit farther so the steppers aren't getting enough current. Big change there. It's really struggling. Dial it down even further. And steppers are barely getting enough power to actually turn it. Dial it down all the way and it just sits here and looks at you. So I don't know when it's supposed to come back this way, so I'm going to watch it. There you go. I'm going to make it come back about this far. If it doesn't, then I'm probably going to force it to lose a couple steps. There you go. And as before, I just uh, I'm going to put this in the middle of the range. Now remember, you're going to have a higher reference voltage going through your y-axis because it's going through both stepper motors instead of just one. If you change your spindle out for something a little bit heavier, then you may have to dial your pot up for your X stepper just because it'll have to work harder to try and move the X carriage back and forth. Now let's go ahead and check the Z axis. So I'm just going to go straight to carve. I'm going to set my step interval to 0.75, eh, call it 0.85 inches on the Z axis. Now if I go to move up or down right now, it may not go down all that, or it may not go up all that way. It's actually just touching the limit switch right now. So I'm going to go down and then I'm going to turn it by hand a bit more. And I turned it by hand just like this pretty easily. So now I know that I have at least 0.85 inches right here before it hits the limit switch so it doesn't crash it. Now this is where it gets tricky. Helps to have two people on this because you can use keyboard commands, shift up, and then shift down to go up and down. And while you're doing this, you basically want it to be constantly moving. You want to be constantly uh, using that stepper motor. And you can have a second person over tweaking the settings. And then basically you do the same kind of thing. Let me turn the uh, turn it down. Here's what it's like if there's no power to the pot. It's just sitting there trying, but nothing. And let me turn the pot all the way up. Sounds a little bit different. And it takes a little bit longer, but it's going to go into thermal overload very shortly. There you go, there's thermal overload. So the Z axis is one of the most painful ones to do, especially by yourself, but it is possible. And then take and set it to the midpoint between uh, high and low. Now again, if you swap the spindle out with a uh, large router, something heavy, you may have to tweak the pot up a little bit because the stepper motor may have to try harder because of the weight. You don't know. And that's how you check and adjust potentiometers for your X-Carve. So, like I said a couple times, you may need to adjust it if you change out your 24 volt spindle for something heavier, something bigger. So for those who care, the reference voltages for mine, on the X-axis I have 1.65 volts, Y-axis I have 1.9, and the Z-axis I have 1.6. Now if you do the math, it says you shouldn't go above 1.6 for long term use, as in constant back and forth. But very few of my cuts are going to be hours and hours of going back and forth with only one axis without any stop or any kind of break to allow it to cool down. 
there's going to be cutting pockets for 20, 30, 40 minutes, and then it's going to stop, and it's going to move, and it's going to go cut pockets somewhere else. It's going to be going back and forth, cutting squares. Figuring out where to set your pots is something that you can do experimentally really easy. You don't have to have the uh, multimeter. I just have it basically for fun. You just experiment, figure out your high end, figure out your low end, and then shoot for the middle. Maybe the high end of middle. I hope this helped. If so, uh, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and please don't hesitate to share this video with anybody that you think could use it. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next project. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, or if you like my channel, please consider subscribing. You can hit the big subscribe channel below, or hit my little logo up here. Also, please consider subscribing to my upcycling channel, Round Trip Upcycling. You just click on the logo right up here.